On today's episode of the Locked On NHL podcast, the Dallas Stars doing a little creeping. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Sup, babes. Welcome into another episode of Locked On NHL, your daily NHL podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. We are your team each and every day. And we thank you for making Locked On NHL your first listen each and every day. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. Today's episode of Locked On NHL is brought to you by Indeed. Still, still searching for a great candidate for your company? Don't search, just match with Indeed. On today's episode of Locked On NHL, we take a look at a potential salary cap boom coming up for the NHL and what it could mean for teams around the league trying to lock up long-term stars. Kirill Kaprizov. We'll also take a look at Darnell Nurse and his injury ramifications. Turns out he is a pretty key piece to what Edmonton is uh, trying to do um, every season. And we'll also talk about the Dallas Stars as they picked up a big win against the Minnesota Wilds, now putting themselves a little closer to the top two spots in the Central Division. My name is Seth Topal, host of Locked on Wild, joined by my uh, Western Conference Tuesday cohort, J.D. Young of Locked on Sharks. J.D., let's talk first about uh, some nice potential salary cap news for uh, the entirety of the NHL. Yeah, uh, Elliot Friedman, uh, of course, of 32 Thoughts, uh, he, on Monday's episode, talked about how they expect to see the salary cap potentially jump even more than expected. Right now, it's expected to go up about 5%, which will put it at right around $92.5 million. Uh, but it seems like now both the NHL and the Players Association are potentially looking at making it increase a bunch because uh, with their NHL is finally kind of coming out of COVID, the players have finished paying back the NHL to escrow stuff, uh, which is way too above my head, basic for it. But same, uh, same. it's that the players owe the NHL money to continue to get their salary. But anyway, we are clear of this. The revenues are looking good. Um, and I think we might see a huge jump and Friedman threw about 95 to $97 million for next season. And then potentially a jump up into the 105 to 110 for the following season after that. So I think they're going to look at potentially smoothing this out a little bit, right? There's a, you could look at the NBA a few years ago, kind of had the same issue where they had a huge spike cap or cap spike where um, they all of a sudden, every team just got dumped a bunch of money. And that of course led to the golden state warriors getting Kevin Durant. Uh, everybody got mad. Uh, of course, what, you know, that's, I think, so the NHL, they're looking to kind of smooth this out. So that way, not just one class draft class or free agency class kind of, uh, you know, benefits, but two free agency class benefits from it. And you look at next year's uh, free agents, you know, Miko Rantanen and Mitch Marner kind of, uh, not that we expect either of those guys to be going away, but these guys could be looking at potentially resetting the market uh, of what star players get that everyone kind of slots in after that. So it looks like uh, next July 1st might be a, a real fun time for free agents frenzy. Is there anybody in the NHL who is more excited about this news than Bill Guerin with the fact that uh, Kirill Kaprizov's extension is looming? Now, it can't officially, the negotiations can't officially begin until the offseason of this coming season. So, yeah, so there's there's still some time to uh, to put that into place, but you know, if if you're the uh, if you're the Minnesota Wild, you're looking at this and saying geez, we might get two bumps, two big bumps before that contract even comes into play. And for a player of that caliber, you're looking at $13, $14 million a season easy for uh, for his mega extension. All of a sudden, you uh, you have some uh, some spending money. You've got some uh, some money to play with. The, uh, the balance on your credit card has been uh, 
mysteriously expanded to where now you're like, yes. hey, I got a little more money than I thought I did. Yeah, and you look at teams like Edmonton, who we'll talk out here about here in a little bit, right? Uh, you're going to have a massive contract kicking with Dreisaitl, and you're going to have a new McDavid extension coming as well. Uh, for teams like that, that's going to help them out, as they're always one of those kind of up against the cap teams. And if you're a team that you know like is kind of going through their rebuild, and you have potential stars who are going to have to get paid at some point uh like you're you know the these there's gonna be plenty more cap space and i think for the nhl like kind of a big picture for this it's it's good for the nhl right like you can't be like you look at the other leagues right where the guys are getting paid like the star top end guys uh i'm not going to include baseball with their ridiculous <laughs> fifty thousand year a uh, quarter no. billion dollar contract or whatever you know uh whatever those guys are getting but like Team like with salary caps, you know, you look at like quarterbacks in the NFL, those guys are getting paid 50, 60 million. Uh, you know, you look at the NBA, those guys are getting 60, 70 million for the top guys. And the NHL just chugging along here in the low teens uh, with their contracts here. So I think this is, this is going to be a big step to try to kind of write that and make sure that like star players in the NHL getting paid like star players. And I think it's going to help the middle class too, as there's just going to be more money. And hopefully, you know, you're not seeing so many guys kind of squeezed out because it's like, why should I pay, you know, you like half a million dollars more when I can just get an ELC type of guy? Maybe you start to see a more healthy middle class from the NHL. Yeah, you would certainly hope so. And if you're a team like Anaheim, you're like, well, just tell me how much I have to spend. Like, <laughs> just tell me what the... Here. I mean, what the, the Sharks have to spend like fifty million dollars to get to the salary cap floor next year because oh, they have man. like they have like ten ELCs on their <laughs> like on their books right now. It's ridiculous. They're gonna have to spend so much money this offseason. Yeah, and the Kel Grayland twenty million dollar contract, baby. Oh, Let's go. Jeez, <laughs> Anaheim has eighteen and a half million dollars in cap space right now with the uh, projected sixty five million dollar cap floor, and if let's just say. Let's just say it goes to a hundred for nice easy math. That's a twelve million dollar increase. So I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what they end up having to spend, but it's you're, you're going to have to. You're going to have to give Corey Perry a five by five. <laughs> uh man, Corey Perry, like forty five year old Corey Perry, just skating around, just uh, doing. Corey Perry things and scoring the greasiest goals ever. Uh, yeah, they would love that in Anaheim. I, I'm sure they would love that in Anaheim to have Corey Perry back doing uh, Corey Perry things, at least for one more ride. But uh, well, you know, if he does go, they're going to lose in the Stanley Cup finals because uh, this is known. So, yeah, this is known. <laughs> I think they would take that as the yes. uh, the next step in their process is, you know, you're you're in a rebuild for X amount of seasons, then all of a sudden you get to the Stanley Cup final and you lose, they would consider that massive progress. Yeah, they would. Yeah. Uh, they would. But uh, I, I'm really curious to see, though, like, because, I mean, we know some of these guys, like the guys I had mentioned before, you know, guys like Ranson in, um, you know, who are expected to be signed up. But what this does to, like, the free agents, you know, maybe a guy like John Tafaris, who we there's been so much talk, maybe the leaves are ready to move on. He's going to be a free agent, going to be kind of an older guy, like, some of these guys who potentially hit free agency next year, like, are we going to just see contracts that are just ridiculous because GMs can't help themselves or GMs going to try to kind of play a little bit safe? Because, I mean, you you only have so many contracts to spend this on, so it's going to be interesting to see how GMs kind of go after, especially some of the top-end guys, um, you know, as, as they go, as they hit into free agent, you know, like, Nikolai Ellers, uh, who's you know expected, you know, is going to be in that last year of his deal as a UFA. Maybe Winnipeg try, you know, Winnipeg might be able to afford him a little bit easier now. Um, but if he gets free agency, like he might be the bell of the ball for a team looking for more scoring. Like this could be a a very interesting and crazy free agency with a bunch of teams who've been very much having to kind of count their pennies and make sure, you know, go coupon shopping during free agency to all of a sudden you're having just a huge amount of money just drop into your lap. Yeah. You go from balling on a budget to, Hey, I just got the inheritance. Let's go spend it. <laughs> oh but, uh, man. Yeah. I can't we'll, wait. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll see. It'll be just carnage and chaos. We, we know that for sure. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll keep an eye on that, but uh, some big injury news coming up. As we uh, talk about 
Darnell Nurse, who it turns out a lot of people not a huge fan of, but hey, guess what? He's a key piece for the Oilers, and uh, they're going to have to try to find a way to replace him for the next uh, several days. We'll talk about the latest with Darnell Nurse and the Edmonton Oilers as we continue today's episode of Locked on NHL after this. Today's episode of Locked on NHL is brought to you by Indeed. We are driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search. Match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring and matching platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. Plus, listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash locked on. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. That's Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Welcome back to today's episode of Locked On NHL. Once again, we thank you for making Locked On NHL your first listen each and every day. For those sneaky waiver wire picks, make sure you check out the Locked On Fantasy Hockey podcast so you can stay on top in your league. You won't find better advice anywhere on your fantasy hockey team. So Locked On Fantasy Hockey, make sure to check it out wherever you listen to your podcasts. So, Darnell Nurse is going to miss some time for the Edmonton Oilers, and uh, I believe the timetable given was five to ten days uh, until he is uh, able to return to the action uh, for those yep. Oilers. That is it, but you never know uh, with concussions. I don't think they actually said concussion, but uh, what you know, if it walks Pretty like a duck, evident. walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. You never know with concussions if something could crop up. So I think that's why they try to give a little bit more of a range there. But uh, yeah, I would expect it, you know, about a week or two to, before we see nurse back. Yeah. And you, you look at where Edmonton is at right now, you know, they're, they're not in one of those top three spots in the Pacific division as of right now. And that wild card fight in the West is robust. If I could, uh, if I could use an optimal word, it's robust. And for this Oilers team, we have seen over the last couple of seasons, Stuart Skinner, uh, the numbers just, you know, they're very up and down. They're very yep. Jekyll and Hyde. And you're going to need some good defense to be able to help help him out. So he's not having to do it all himself. And uh, Darnell Nurse, for all of the uh, all the criticisms, all the critiques, Darnell Nurse is a huge part of that. Uh, yeah, it's good and bad. He's a huge part of that. So before we get to more into Nurse, what do you think the Ryan Reeves? I know we we typically stick Western Conference here, but I think Ryan Reeves, uh, five game suspension, uh, too much, too little, right on the nose. Where'd you kind of land on it? Uh, I spit taked that the Department of Player Safety actually handed out a uh, multiple <laughs> game suspension as Not opposed just a to just the back and hey, don't do that again. <laughs> yeah, as yeah. opposed to just writing out a parking ticket. Um, that was I was actually I was floored by that, that they deemed that play worthy of a five game suspension because five is not that's not a little number. No. That is a substantial suspension handed out. And uh, I think, you know, you look at some of these types of things that you talk about those hits that the NHL is trying to eliminate, trying to get out yes. of the uh, out, out of the general game flow. And uh, I think that's a perfect example of one that uh, the NHL saw and was like, no, we uh, we we can't be doing this. Um, we can't be doing this during games like under yeah, any I circumstances, think, especially for Reeves, who has had a history of uh, I think is now his third suspension, if I recall correctly, about of getting suspended four hits like the, you know, uh, I think five. I probably would have like to see a little bit more closer to the 10 mark just to kind of 
put the kibosh on this hopefully but uh again uh like you said pleasant you know uh expectations were basically on the floor here and the c5 yeah. I, you know i think you have to uh be happy with that so uh but yeah back to nurse and kind of his impact here i think that for edmonton right who is very very thin um on their just with their group in general right you look at you know they don't have a vander kane right now uh you're still missy like now you're losing darnell nurse like it's a lot of pieces that are not available um and they're going to have to kind of play with some funky matchup lineups i think they're at roll 11 and 7 for a couple games like this might be a team that is, you know, like they're going to have to continue to ride Dry Saddle and McDavid um, as they always do. And luckily, Dry Saddle and McDavid are playing really well right now. So, yeah. And so I, I'm on the defensive side, I mean, Matthias Eckholm is is one that you're going to have to, you know, he's he's got to step up and take the lead. He's getting paid accordingly. And so you've just you got to step up and you've got to be the one to uh, to help kind of lead this defense until yep. Nurse is uh, is ready to return. And yeah, I, I like the way that you phrased it, that, uh, this is just, this is just something the offense I think is going to have to, uh, really help, um, take pressure off of this defense while nurse is out. Um, because you know, it's, it's tricky, but you still can win games five to three. And, um, Let's bring back the fun Oilers. What do you gave six to five? Let's bring I mean, it. <laughs> honestly, let's I, I think that sentence is perfect. Let's bring back the fun Oilers. And if they need to score 10 goals to win, let's sign me it. up. Let's do it. Yeah, uh, I I really want to see how Evan Bouchard kind of handles this uh, time frame right now. Bouchard, had amazing playoffs. Um, you know, I think maybe a little bit more up and down, you know, start uh, to the season. So I think right now it's it's a lot on Bouchard's shoulders on that blue line. Let's see how he handles this. And I, I'm curious to see how the Oilers kind of continue to respond here uh, going forward. So uh, I'm trying to pull up their schedule right now and see kind of what it looks like here. Hopefully maybe they get a little lucky with the uh, actual um, schedule and not have to like play like the a brutal gauntlet of teams so yeah. um they're playing montreal as we speak right now they have the sends who are kind of meh then you play minnesota last i checked they're pretty good uh you play the rangers and you play utah colorado kind of in the expectation of when we might see uh right around there i think is when we might potentially see nurse back so you got some tough games here especially against uh your wild and, and the rangers who you know are a very good team as well so yeah i, I think this is going to be a really good test for oilers to see how they respond here and maybe it's back to that run and gun shoot offense while you're waiting for nurse to get back and see if you can just outscore your problems for a week or two yeah, you just you don't want to take a spill while uh, while nurse is out. That's that's the only thing you want to uh, to try to avoid. Bad oil pun. I'm sorry. I just I had no choice. I had to. It, it was right there. It was right there, and you careened right into it. Yeah, I <laughs> just... uh, I slid. It was a it was a slick. It was it was a slick play, and I just I had no choice. Um, I, I am curious. you bring up the wild card right because you look at like you said it's robust which is i think you're just trying to be very nice but like uh <laughs> you have the flames uh oilers kraken avs utah and the blues all separated by five points right now and i know some teams have you know games in hands here and there but like you have a bad week or two and you're all of a sudden you got a lot of teams you got to leapfrog i know it's we're just hitting American Thanksgiving, but still like it is, this is a very uh, thick middle class uh, in the Western conference. And yeah, the Oilers cannot afford to uh, kind of take a big step back here. No. And uh, it Calgary is leading the, uh, the wild card chase with 21 points. Chicago's got 13 uh, Nashville at 15. So there's, there's not a ton of room uh, separating everybody in the chase. It's just a matter of not falling too far behind, or you have to try to do what the Wild did last year, which was or fight Edmonton and claw. did last year. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, Edmonton too. Boy, that was uh, last year. Felt like three different seasons all in one. Um, just, just unbelievable. But I don't. I don't have to. I don't have to tell you that because um, the the last three or four shark seasons have probably felt like a decade. It's been a very. I don't remember what playoffs feel like. Uh, yeah, 
sometime. sometime sometime you will well what? we will uh, finish by taking a look at the dallas stars who are creeping their way up to the top two in the central division a big win for dallas this week against the minnesota wild we will break it all down as we continue today's episode of locked on nhl after this Price Picks is the best place to get real money sports action with over 10 million members and billions of dollars in award winnings. Price Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You just pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long on Price Picks. Price Picks is the best place to get real money sports action with over 10 million users. So sign up today and they invented the Flex Play, which means you can still cash out if your lineup isn't perfect. You can double your money even if your picks, one of your picks doesn't hit. It's time today and you'll get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Uh, with prize picks, you can win money as your favorite players collect points. So if you think uh, Logan Stankoven, who we're going to be talking about here in just a minute, has more than a half a goal in him, you just pick more on your prize picks entry and turn your predictions into cash. Um, so download the app today. Use code Locked On NHL to get fifty dollars instantly after you play your first five dollar lineup. Again, download the app. Use code Locked On NHL to get fifty dollars instantly after you play your first five dollar lineup. Prize picks. Run your game. Home stretch of today's episode of Locked On NHL. Once again, we thank you for making Locked On NHL your first listen each and every day as we continue to uh, take a look at some of the headlines from the Western Conference here over the last week. JD, the Dallas Stars beat the Minnesota Wild 2-1 to one on Saturday. Uh, the Wild missing a couple of key pieces in Matt Zuccarello and Jewel Erickson Eck, but Jake Ottinger again shutting the door and... All of a sudden, this Dallas team, they're three points back of Minnesota. They are uh, 11 and five on the season and uh, continuing to just cruise along like we always expected they would. Yeah, uh, right. You 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 look at like Winnipeg, which has kind of got a lot of the headlines, especially with the, their start to the season and rightfully so. Uh, but Dallas, you know, everyone just kind of expected this team's probably going to be good because, you know, they have a lot of guys returning. They have got young guys like Logan St. Govan uh, making a big impact. Wyatt Johnson, like this team just felt like they're going to be good. And uh, guess what? They're pretty good. Right. Uh, and just quietly going about doing their business, you know, in, I, I think one of the, you know, Jake Ottinger, who's, I've on this show, I've talked about, you know, maybe not my favorite goalie because I feel like there's always something kind of missing from his game has had a really great start to his season this year. But I think for them going out and getting Casey to Smith this off season, uh, who's played, he's only played five games, right. And with Ottinger, he, you're go he's going to get the majority of the starts, but Casey Smith is played outstanding uh, 929 save percentage, one shutout. Like I know. And again, He's only played uh, five games this year, four starts. But like just having a guy like that where it's like whenever Andre needs a break, you can kind of roll him out there. And I expect, especially if Dallas kind of gets their spot cemented um, in the spring, the Smith's probably going to play a few games here and there to kind of give Ottinger a break going into the playoffs. That way Ottinger can go. But like, yeah, this team, it's they're really good, man. Like it is it's hard to pick out a lot of flaws in this team right now and uh expect them to make another long uh run this year because this Dallas team is very good you know the crazy thing to me is that the stars continue to do this and you look at their uh, leaderboard right now and uh, Jason Robertson through 16 games he's got four goals he's got four assists that's it and I asked uh, Joey Erickson of locked on stars about this I was like What's your level of concern? Because two seasons yeah. ago, Robertson was a 100-point guy. Last year, is at like 80-ish, I think. And now this year, is on pace for mid-40s. And it just it seems weird that you've got a guy who is so supremely talented offensively, and it just it seems like he's going the wrong way um, in terms of his like his point numbers and his point projections and it just yeah. it seems like he has kind of he's Benjamin buttoning as opposed to like <laughs> truly blossoming and turning into this elite 
player that we know he can be. So what did he say? What level of concern uh, was he concerned? Or is it just like right now the team's winning and you expect Jason Robertson at some point is just going to yeah. have his like breakout. And I think it's actually, it's probably, it's probably better for doubt. Like they're still winning and they're not even getting production from their best players. So what happens yeah. if Jason Robertson just turns on the light? You know, we talked about uh, Elias Pedersen last, you know, was it was the last week of the week before, like, is Pedersen going to do things? And guess what? Pedersen started doing things recently. Uh, this is almost like you guy. listen. Jason, Jason Robertson, are you going to do stuff? And now I uh, watch Jason Robertson is going to like freaking go off over this next week. So uh, we have that type of power, Seth. I hope you know. But yeah, I mean, you look at who they're getting. You know, Matt Duchesne, who just wants to hang out and play hockey and listen to country music. Uh, 20 points in 16 games. Mason Marchman, who, you know, I think uh, they've really waited for him and like with his development. And he's really kind of having that that big season for them. Logan Stankoven, who I think right now is the Calder favorite with 14 points in 16 games. Like this team, like they're getting production from a bunch of different guys, um, you know, and you're not even getting uh, like, like Miro Haskinen, right? Six points in 16 games. Like yeah. you're not even like the guys you would expect to be huge point producers. They haven't even done that yet. So Dallas has done such a great job of reloading on the fly and the way they draft and develop guys uh, where like they're just getting, you know, like Logan Stankoven and J Wyatt John, like these guys are going are just kind of starting to figure things out. Like this team is going to be really good for a really long time and they're going to be able to build around this young core and then attract veteran guys to kind of help guys like, um, uh, sorry, like a Matt Duchesne, the kind of veteran guys who want to come in and be able to to help out. It's insane, like what this team has has done. Supremely jealous, and you know, you you <laughs> look at their um, you look at their books too. Like I was just taking a just taking a gander at their cap friendly situation. Um, we can't R. say R. cap friendly because they don't exist. Puckpedia, um, yeah pretty wide open like they are jamie ben comes off the books after this season the only players that they have locked up for next season include tyler sagan rupe hints jason robertson and uh, mason marchman uh they got logan stankoven still on his elc and yep. uh, on defense you've got miro heiskin and you've got esalon dell uh thomas harley matt dumba and uh Ilya Lyabushkin. um so your defense is in like a year or two and then they're gone. Like, yeah, yeah. You've... you got a blank it's... canvas to, uh, to really do some things with, from a salary perspective. Um, that JB Ben eight by 18 contract is going to be ridiculous. <laughs> oh boy. Boy, that might, uh, somebody has got to do it. Cause that guy just needs to continue to, uh, he just needs to continue to do his thing. Um, whatever his thing may be. I don't know what his thing is anymore. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they're going to have to pay guys, you know, like why Johnson is an RFA. Uh, and he's going to need a new contract, right? Uh, Logan sick. Owen's going to need a new, it's going to need a contract. And if he could plays the way we continue uh, him to play like those, those guys are going to be and uh, as where's like Jason Robertson is going to be due for a new contract here in two years as well. So yeah. they're going to have to take care of, of, of their guys, but like they're in such a, a great position. I think most franchises would love, to be in the position where you're at where you you know who your next group of guys are you have the cap space to be able to to pay them um and you're going to be able to build around these guys for the foreseeable future and um yeah you just i you just don't see dallas like i just don't see a, a world let, other than injuries where this team takes a step back over the next couple of seasons because they just they're so locked and loaded with their brand new core ready to replace their old core it's it's again that how they've drafted and developed the, their guys, uh, it's it's got to be the envy of the league because they're doing it with late first round picks, second round picks. Like it is, it's they're really good at what they do, man. Yeah, I, I was just gonna ask you if Dallas is the most enviable position in the Western Conference like five years from now. Um, I would be hard pressed to find anybody else that is in that because you know. Let's let's say things kind of take a tilt. You've got a blank canvas to work with. If you make a deep run and you put yourself potentially in the Western Conference Finals or the Stanley Cup Final, 
yep. you can bring everybody back. Like y- yeah. you have the full capability to Bob Ross, however you want this. And, um, I just I think you I think if you polled NHL GMs, if there was one job that you could have that wasn't yours, I would imagine Dallas is probably the most common answer. Yeah, it's it's got to be up there. I mean, uh, and then you think about, too, like the young players, right? They're going to be playing meaningful games every year. It's not like, you know, like San Jose, right, where you have a lot of young, you kind of have a blank canvas. You have young stars who you think um, it's going to, but like you're not playing meaningful games. You're kind of trying to pull yourself out from the, from the bootstrap. So these young guys like Stinkov and, and Wyatt Johnson and, you know, Maverick Bork, who's kind of gotten a taste here and there, um, they're going to be playing meaningful games playing deep playoff runs like this is only going to make them better quicker uh because of these experiences so yeah they they uh they're really good it's... i'm i'm very jealous <laughs> <sighs> but we know we'll see because we we probably would have said the same thing about the boston bruins um before the playoffs yeah, but last they don't, year and they don't draft like like you could tell like you knew true. like Boston at some point that's going to come to an end, especially with their pipeline. But like they, you know, they draft for talented players like Logan St. Govan fell because he's short. But like every team would like to have Logan St. Govan on his team. That dude, like that dude plays hard and he's supremely talented. Like they draft for talent and they figure out the rest and they, they believe in their process and their process is coming together really nicely for them. So yeah, I'm yeah. Dallas is going to be good. Like, I, I'm curious to see how they handle this trade deadline, um, especially if, for example, like Jason Robertson doesn't find his game. If they look to try to add another score, you know, like what do they do to try to kind of improve this team? And especially for a team who still has their first round pick this year, um, they like they have their first round pick for the foreseeable future. Like they have, they're going to have some cap space at the deadline. Like they're, yeah, I'm curious to see how they handle this. If they kind of go in all in, all in this year and saying, this is our time to kind of, to try to win this thing. Yeah. Well, we'll, uh, we'll see what happens, but um, it is a fun time to be at the top of the West at uh, this point in the season. And uh, just a a week or so, uh, two weeks actually, before we can finally look at who is in the playoffs and who is out, because that's definitely how that's going to play out uh, for the rest of the season, but we'll keep you posted And uh, that will do it for today's episode of Locked on NHL. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on NHL your first listen each and every day. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube if you have not already so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. We've got you covered with new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked on Podcast Network.